two of the guys in the locker room. Uh, we didn't play our best. Lipscomb was more active than we were early. We had, I think, five turnovers in the first eight minutes, and they had more points off turnovers at half and ended up with more t points off turnovers than we did. But I looked down at the stat sheet, and we have five guys in double figures. Uh, we shoot almost 52%, hold them to 36%. Uh, so there were a lot of good things. I think late in the first half, I yelled at them in the huddle, and they tried to show me how dumb I was, and they went out and played very well the last four minutes and got us a little bit of a margin and then uh, uh, just kept playing and making plays. Theo with 15 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. I love that. Uh, Kenny being 4 or 5 from three-point line. Uh, so you got to win one to be able to stay around. And uh, so we won one, and I'm pleased for the guys up here with me and the guys in the locker room. Okay, questions first for, for uh, Kenny and Theo. Please raise your hand. Let James or Michael get you the microphone. Let us know who you are, who you're with, who has the first question. Second row. Kenny, uh, Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer. Just talk about how special today was for you. Um, it was very special. I was excited all week uh, to come to play. Uh, my first game playing heavy minutes. Um, an NCAA tournament, so you know this is this is what you look forward to growing up. So uh, you know I was a little bit more excited about that. Third row to our right. Uh, it's Cole Gray, Illumination Network. Theo, uh, what was your preparation for Garrison Matthews? Um, just to make everything tough. I mean, watching clip tape, you thought everything he was he was going to throw up go in. So we just wanted to make everything tough and. Um, we knew we couldn't support that much on him. Um, once he gets going, he, he gets going. Um, I remember I was watching the, because Mike was my teammate. Um, so I was watching the championship game, and I saw he had like 39 or 36 or something like that. So I knew he, if he got going, it could be a long night for us. Back of the room on our right. Uh, Theo Archansky, WCHL in Chapel Hill. Can you tell me when you incorporated the coast-to-coast -coast part of your game and why exactly that happened? Did you get the coach's permission? Did you see the floor open? When was that and why was that? Um, I think I got coast-to-coast -coast when I was five. <laughs> I remember when I was five, they got mad at me because we was doing jump ball and I just grabbed the ball and tried to go coast-to-coast -coast and lay the ball up. So it didn't just start now. It just Building confidence and understanding that I have a gift and I can put pressure on the defense, especially playing at the four position. Um, I'm the trailing big, so um, it gives me a little more room to operate and make plays for my teammates and myself. Middle of the room aisle. Yeah, I Kip Coons for the Raleigh News and Observer. Theo, you just said you're the four. Yeah, you've become the main distributor ever since the went with the small lineup. How have you embraced that role, and, and have you had to change your game to adapt to it? Um, it's just that's something I've been doing since I've been here, trying to make plays and um, get my teammates open and get them open shots. Uh, but at the same time, I'm more of a I'm a focal point now. People want to stop that, uh, of course. But at the same time, I think if I can get into the paint or I can draw somebody's defender, um, I can. And we got great shooters. Like, like Coach said, we, we got a really good shooting team with Cam, Joel, Luke, and Kenny. Um, we even had a conversation during the game. I tried to get Kenny's man to draw, draw to me a little bit longer, which I could have pitched ahead. But just trying to make a play and get his defender to come off so I can kick it to the, these great shooters that we have. Front row. Brett Friedlander, North State Journal. Kenny, uh, you, you guys had some trouble you know, getting clear of them in the first half. But was it a matter of just not turning the ball over? And you, did you feel like? Once you kind of took care of that, you'd be okay. Um, yeah, you know we were we were turning the ball over, and that's was that's what kind of gave them confidence. I think they had 13 points off turnovers in the first half, but uh, you know that gave them a little confidence, let them stick around, <laughs> and uh, you know we were beating ourselves. So once we got over that hump, uh, we were all right from there, and we just had to get stops and finish on other end. Second row to our right, George Willis, New York Post. This is almost the same. Thing question, but uh, Theo, why do you think you guys started so slow and was that a product of uh, whatever? Um, I don't really know. I mean, uh, I guess just trying to get your feet wet. It's a, it's a big time game. You win or go home, bottom line. So I think if you don't have jitters, you're not human. 
bottom line. So we we needed to get our feet wet, and once you saw we 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 got going, we got going, and um, I think we responded well. To our left on the aisle, Ruben from the field house. Uh, question for Theo. Actually, I'm going to take one for each. Uh, Theo, question for you is, Kenny uh, was really good on the three-point arc today. When he was, when you guys were in Brooklyn, he did a lot of finishing the break. What part of his game do you really, really impresses you the most? Um, he's a basketball player. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Um, people want to just call him one thing, and that's a shooter. I mean, today he made a left-hand floater. Left hand floater. Did wasn't it left handed? I mean, he's just not just a. That was he's not just. Bad shot. <laughs> that was a bad shot. That hey, but he showed him he can make it. So maybe he got an opportunity <laughs> to do it again. I mean, Kenny's a basketball player, and that's that's who type of players coach recruit that they can do more than one thing, and uh, it just showed today. You since since it became the postseason, you've had you've been playing really well. Uh, is there something about the big games that you think maybe stirs something inside of you? Um, you know, I think so. Uh, I'm competitive, so I think is that that's just the competitive nature in me wants to step up uh, when the games get bigger. Um, and I also know now it's, it's, it's do or die, win or lose, uh, when are you going home. So I also have to, uh, I, had, I know I had to step up my play going into the postseason. Any other questions for Kenny or Theo? Before they leave, let's get this straight. That was a bad shot. <laughs> Why? You guys need some coaching. Why was it a bad shot? I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't practice it during practice, and I'm dumbfounded that this rascal doesn't have the answer because Steele was standing right under the basket. Oh, All you had no. to do was bounce past to him a layup. Yeah. But I clapped just like you did. When I did. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, any more questions? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Theo's always ready to stay longer if you need him. Reminder, the North Carolina locker room is open. It'll be open until 537. Next question for Coach, to our left. Roger Rubin from the Fieldhouse. Roy, can you speak to the way that Kenny has played here down the, in the postseason? Well, he has had some good games. There's no question. But he's had a pretty doggone good year. I, I think he's one of the five best defensive players in our league. He didn't make the all-defensive team, but he led our team in charges. He's really good defensively. Today, he picked up the two early fouls, but he made two threes even still while he was doing that. But he's had a pretty doggone good year all year. Now, uh, one thing that the team the other night when he got somebody else asked a question about his layups plus three. Was that you, Roger, or somebody else? It makes no difference. The other night they were trying to press us, and so Theo broke the press and threw it to Kenny, and Kenny laid it up because we do believe in attacking against the press. But he's a he's a really good basketball player who's hungry. Remember last year he got hurt and didn't play all that uh, time period. His freshman year he was one for 13 from three, so he likes having success. Uh, but he has had uh, really a good year for us all year. He's been our most consistent defender. And I'm not sure who's the leading three-point shooter now, either he or Luke, but they've shot it pretty well too. But now it's, he's taking it to a little bit of a different level, which is okay with me. Back of the room. Joe Gillio with the News and Observer. Roy, you said yesterday you wanted the team to have fun here yeah. and enjoy, their t enjoy themselves. Was your pregame routine chilling with your grandson there on the bench, was that part of your effort to have fun? No, you know, it's, uh, the kids grow old so quickly. Uh, I used to get uh, uh, Court and Aiden on the bench if I could, mostly at home. I was a dummy when I was a young coach. I never let Scott come down to the bench. It's one of the uh, things I regret. So later on, after he got old, older, Neil Darty was my assistant, and I got Neil to have his sons down on the bench. We came back to Chapel Hill, and I got Coach Robinson to have his sons sitting on the bench and do the same thing to Coach Davis. And it's just, uh, you don't, I loved the picture 100 years ago. You guys have never seen this picture. But I saw a picture of Tark sitting on the bench and his son Danny was sitting on the bench with a coat and tie on. He looked like a, Danny will hate me saying this, but it looked like a sweet little kid. And I've always remembered that, and I know that I didn't, uh, didn't have that neat memory with my own son. Third row to our right. Uh, Coach, obviously you've been successful at a lot of places in the NCAA tournament, but you're now 15-0 in this building, 12-0 in Charlotte in the NCAA tournament games. What about Charlotte brings out the best in the Tar Heels? Uh, 
we have good players who have really played well. The fans do help us. And I'm willing to see if we can pass a law to say that we play all the NCAA games here. I'd, I'd be willing to go for that. But uh, uh, usually we played really well here. I mean, 05 and 09, uh, uh, excuse me, 05 particularly, I thought we played great here. And uh, so players play. I've never lost to a building, but this has been very comfortable for us. Hopefully it'll last one more game. Third row. Roy, uh, Dan Walken, USA Today. Um, Joel Barry passes Michael Jordan on the all-time scoring list. I know Michael <laughs> I know Michael didn't play four years, but is that a line of demarcation for a Carolina player? Just how would you put that into perspective when you pass him, you know, in, in the record book in that way? Well, I'm sure every kid, you know, you say something like that, I start grinning. I mean, my gosh. But, uh, you know, 23 was pretty good. So having that extra year probably would have helped him too. But – you still you're ahead of Michael Jordan in something, you know. There's a lot of guys aren't ahead of Michael Jordan in anything. So I'm happy for Joel, uh, but also I've never had a point guard goaltend a shot that was not going to go in, you know. So let's remember that's one thing I told him on, on the bench and then in the locker room to, to goaltend a shot that is not going in was not the smartest point guard play I've ever had. Standing on the aisle. Roy, you're going to go up against a big, strong team Sunday. Have you seen a team like that this year? How, how do you think you're going to match up with Texas A&M? You know, I really I, I'm sitting on the fence with it because I haven't seen them very much at all. Uh, I said in one of the press conferences with uh, maybe it's the ACC term, I watch a lot of games, but it's games against people we're getting ready to play. Uh, I watch 10 or 15 minutes of an NBA game if one of our guys is in there. But uh, I saw a few minutes of, I think, who did they play the first game of the year? Some other country. Oh, West Virginia. Wasn't it out of our country? Yeah, okay. So I watched that. It was the first, first game. I watched a little bit of that. Uh, I saw them play a little bit of Kansas for about six or seven minutes. So I really – I know Davis is a heck of a tough kid around the basket. I know that Williams – I wish I were related, okay, because he's as good an athlete as I've seen – and uh, his dunks, he dunks them straight down. His dunks don't go in sideways. But, uh, uh, you know, Billy, just think about what that guy's gone through physically and mentally over the last five or six or seven years. I'm, I'm a big fan of his. I'm a big admirer of uh, the health problems that he's had and still doing what he's doing the way he's done it. Uh, I really am. He, he, I'm a big hero. He's one of my big heroes because uh, – He's handled some tough stuff, but uh, but I don't know that much about their team, and I need to find out a lot more in the next 48 hours. But I know a lot about their head coach, and I'm a great admirer of his. We have three more questions. I know who you are back on the aisle. Uh, Roy, um, you know what Scott tells people that he's really pissed off at you for not, let, not sitting him on the bench? No, I offered it to him, but I'd let him get a little bit too old, and then he said he'd rather sit with his buddies. He didn't want to sit there, but but I know he has not said what you just said either. <laughs> Yeah. Question, same thing about Theo. Uh, the, the busting out, is that the, uh, the alignment or his maturity or you just saying take the dad gum ball to the basket? Or, how did that happen? Well, it's, it's something that's been happening since Theo started playing, number one. But this year it stands out more because he is the foreman. So the foreman's got to try to pick him up. But every year, even Theo's freshman year, for Justin Jackson, for Harrison Barnes, Every, every perimeter player I've ever coached, I said, if you get the ball off the board, I want you to bust out on the break. Because I'm old school, old guy. The best fast break basketball I ever saw in my life was Magic Johnson getting the ball off the backboard. It wasn't when Kareem got it and made an outlet pass or, or James made an outlet pass or Kurt Rambish. It's when Magic got it off. He busted out on the break and he's already left two defensive players behind. And then he had made good decisions on the other end, and he could take it to the basket himself and lay it up. Now, I'm not trying to say that Theo is, is Magic Johnson, but that's been in my brain for a long time. I coached it that same way at Kansas. I've coached it that way at North Carolina every year. If a perimeter player gets the ball, go ahead and bust out on the break, and I think it's, I think it's the best fast break there is. And Theo, his freshman year, he had a, bit, a bad assist error ratio. But his sophomore, junior, and seniors, his assist error ratio has been really good. A couple of his turnovers tonight were offensive fouls that I thought were questionable, but what he does is he is a playmaker, and I like for him to do that. Now, if he doesn't get the rebound, I want him to run to the low post on the other end. 
because, again, the guy that's going to have to guard him as a four-man, he's going to come and set our rear screen on the lob, so it gets him out on the court against a four-man. But it's, it's been more evident because he's attempting it more and the four guys, the guys trying to pick him up. Middle of the room. Cox with Cox Sports Broadcasting. Coach, can you talk a little bit about your perimeter defense? You took away their three-point game today and really did a good job with that. Well, we, it was one of the three things I put up on the board, and we put up three things before every game, and it didn't have to be a nuclear physicist to figure out we needed to stop them or try to hold their percentage down. We not were not going to stop them, but we really wanted them to uh, not shoot a good percentage from three-point line. So that was one of the things we put up. but. You know what we are, guys? We're the biggest remedy for anybody that's got three-point shooting woes. I mean, uh, I'm telling you what. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, Kenny Cooper was 11 for 55 before tonight, so we decided to help off in the post. So he makes three of them. Another guy that made one at the end, and I don't mean to pick on somebody, was six for 36. It's like several years ago, we didn't go into Kentucky and play them, and they can't make a three and shoot against us. They make every daggum one they look out. So we're, if you have a bad three-point shooting team, just play us, and your percentage will go up quite a bit. Last question. First Last front question. row. Hey, Coach Kier, Luck of Black Sports Online. Um, UNC, since the tournament, kind of have rocky starts in the beginning. How do you plan to combat that going throughout the tournament? Well, first of all, it's hard for me to answer a question when I disagree with what your question is. You know, last year we played uh, Texas Southern. We won by 40 or 50 or something. Justin made five threes in the first half. Now, back in 1982, before you were born, we had Michael Jordan, Sam Perkins, James Worthen. We blew out James Madison in the first round, 52 to 50. You know, so there has been some struggles there, but uh, you just got to play. But I, I've never thought we struggled in the first round. I've always thought we struggled more each and every round we go. But uh, winner stays, loser goes home. That's the way we try to approach it. Thank you guys very much. Does anybody know how Tiger did? Jesus Christ. <laughs>
Um, you know, just having the 21 season again, back to back, I think that's a record for us too. Uh, making it to the tournament, winning conference. I mean, we had so many great things happening. So this one loss uh, doesn't determine, it doesn't, you know, make our season. Uh, we had so many wins, so many great accolades throughout the whole season. So, um, you know, we're going to hold our heads high and just, you know, start the postseason now. Front row to our right. Casey, you've got the bulk of this team coming back, so you don't have to worry about recruiting yet. But when you get around to worrying about recruiting. Uh, a question just for the student athletes now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Garrison, can you talk about the, the players coming back? Uh, the, 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 what kind of team do you have guys coming back? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have a great team next year. Obviously, we're going to miss the guys that are leaving. They've been a huge part of this program and getting us here. They're the first senior class to get us here, so we're going to miss them a ton. But I love these guys right here and the guys we have coming back. It's going to be huge for us next year. We've got a lot of experience, um, so it's, it's going to be good. Other questions for Rob, Kenny, or Garrison? Third row to our right. Rob, how do you enjoy the moment of taking of going with this team uh, for the first time without losing focus on getting ready for this game? Or uh, I mean, we enjoyed it just as a team throughout the whole season too. I mean, we knew we had one one objective, and that's make the dance. Um, so I mean, everybody loved each other. Everybody did it for each other. Um, so that's how you enjoy it. I mean, knowing all the hard work is paying off. You know, going three and zero in our tournament, in our conference tournament. Um, you know, having ten good practices before this game. We just we did it for for each other. I uh, did it for the coaching staff, for all the administration behind us, and so, um, you know, we had fun with it throughout the whole process. But we also knew we had to come out here and play our butts off. Third row. With Carolina Blitz, uh, Garrison, the Tar Heels talked about how you were a focal point coming into this game, kind of slowing you down. They mentioned your 39 point win. Uh, point game against Florida Gulf Coast. Can you talk about how they disrupted your, your game offensively today? Uh, it, was, it was for sure tough to get shots off. They were pretty hard closeouts, and then they had some good guys down low that were um, interfering with my, uh, with my layups and stuff. So it was tough. They played great defensively. Uh, Pinson and, and uh, Williams, they, they played great. It was tough to get shots off for sure, but uh, it was unacceptable the way I played. I take full responsibility. and work hard this offseason for next year. Middle row aisle. Yeah, this, this, is for Ken no. this is for Kenny. Talk about that stretch late in the uh, first half. You guys were leading 33-31. How did it feel during that stretch? And then what do you think happened during their 10-1 to run? Um, I think uh, things were just flowing, uh, flowing for us. We were making shots. We were uh, uh, not quite getting as many stops as we would have uh, liked. But uh, they were scoring, but we were kind of trading baskets for a while. And then um, um, shots, shots stopped falling for us for a, uh, a little bit. And um, they uh, went on a little run because they continued to score. So, and again, they're a, they're a great team. So it's hard to slow them down when you're not scoring. And they're so good in transition. So that's one of the things that kind of uh, let them extend the lead a little bit. Back of the room to our left. Uh, Rob, what did you make of the big Lipscomb uh, contingent that made the trip all the way out here to Charlotte and all the other thousands that tuned in on CBS? Yeah, we loved it. Um, we love having, you know, that was pretty much the city of Nashville behind us right there showing out. Um, so to see those guys and the fans, see them in the hotels cheering for us, I mean, it's an incredible feeling. We just know that, you know, next season we're going to build off that. And, and, you know, if we have one more fan in the stand next season, it's a win for us. Um, so, yeah, we were super excited about that when we saw everybody. Um, and it just means a lot that, you know, we work so hard throughout the season and to have those guys show up and cheer for us, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to the coaching staff, the, you know, the families that are involved with all this because it looks like we're paying off finally. Any other questions for the student athletes? Okay, Rob, Kenny, Garrison, you guys can head back to the locker room. Congratulations on a great year. Okay, questions for Coach Alexander. First one, front row. Yeah, Casey, what I was going to ask was uh, how will recruiting be different now? How will this program be different now that it's an NCAA tournament team? Yeah, well, that's, that's the job of our staff is to, um, you know, we, we have great short-term benefits for winning. Coming, you, you get to come play, you get to experience it. You create a lot of excitement for yourself. But the residual effect, the long-term effect is what um, – is where our staff has to get to work and capitalize on it and continue to grow incrementally. You know, I mean, we're not going to 
just all of a sudden be somebody we haven't been, but we can continue to take the next step and knock on some doors we haven't knocked on in the past and, you know, and let that continue to help our program get better. Middle of the room aisle. Yeah, I'd like your take on the uh, that stretch at the end of the half. It, it obviously you had the lead with uh, three minutes left in the half, and it didn't seem like the stage was too big for you. But uh, they just had that ran away from you during that stretch. Yeah. Well, we lost a little bit of momentum when Garrison got his second foul. Uh, he didn't play the last probably six, seven, eight minutes of the half, um, and because he had been playing pretty well up until that point. And then <clears throat> we had one very specific possession. I remember where we had subbed at a free throw. We made it a free throw. And then uh, the next possession, they come down. We weren't matched up. Pinson got an AM one. Uh, and that was a real tough break uh, because it was a mistake that we made that, could have been, that shouldn't have happened. And then it was really just, you know, they scored five out of the last seven possessions, I think, and we scored zero out of the last seven possessions to end the half. And I felt like we lost our poise a little bit offensively. We kind of gave in to the moment a little bit offensively. And, uh, and, and therefore, we had the margin that we did. I, did. I was disappointed for sure because, you know, I felt like we really competed and had a lot of really good moments in that first half. Um, so to go into, the, go into the break down nine. It was tough. Any other questions? Third row to our right. Coach, what adjustments did you make to try and hang around as it started to gradually slip away? N nothing uh, significant, honestly. Um, I, I felt like I felt like big picture we were doing okay. You know, there were some subtle things that you know that we work on all the time. You know, you know ball screen coverage. Um, you know, the communication problem we had at that free throw time, you know, things like that were, were the things that I felt like we needed to eliminate. I didn't feel like there was just anything that we had to change significantly. We did make one adjustment in the second half offensively. We went to a different style of offense where we had a lot more player movement. I felt like that might open some things up for us. We got a couple of good looks out of it. Front row to our right. Casey, go through and talk about this team that you've got coming back. I mean, what do you lose? And, and then talk about what comes back for this team. Well, as Garrison mentioned, we lose three seniors that gave a lot to this program. But, um, but for people that are just looking at stats, um, they weren't significant contributors. You know, we'll return all five starters. Uh, we'll return Matt Rose, who you know was our was a really good scorer for us off the bench, and we'll return Nathan Moran, who was a three-year starter for us and a thousand-point scorer almost uh, that didn't play a single game this season. And so, uh, we do have a really good group coming back. We're not going to be so talented at all where we could just show up and win. But between the experience that we have and the quality of depth that we have, then you know we should walk into the off season with some expectations. Third row aisle. Hey, Coach, Kiera Luck of Black Sports Online. Talk about the historical significance for you. We talked about with the players, but what about this moment for you being on the stage and what it means for this program going forward? Yeah, I hope it means um, we'll be back on the stage going forward. Um, you know, that's. That's the goal. For me personally, you know, I get the most joy just out of sharing it with my family and all of the Lipscomb community that supports us. You know, it's when somebody gives you a chance to be their coach and they, um, and they give you the resources you need and the support that you need and the love that you need uh, to go do your job, it's, it's awesome to uh, be able to hand something back over to them and, um, and see them experience um, this moment. Other questions? All right, thank you, Coach.